So let's review how we find the derivative of an inverse trig function. So we're going to start with an inverse sine, and we're going to try to differentiate with respect to x. So whenever we're doing this, it's helpful to have a triangle to put all of our pieces on. So here's what we need to remember. An inverse trig function is actually an angle. So I'm going to rename this inverse sine of x with an angle name. And theta is a great angle name. So I'm going to call that theta. And then I'm going to go over to my right triangle and pick one of my acute angles to be theta. So here's what I'm going to do. If the inverse sine of x is theta, if I take the sine of both sides of this equation so that I have the sine of the inverse sine of x equals the sine of theta, I will get that x equals the sine of theta. Now this is only true for a set number of angles, um, you know, for a given interval of theta, but we'll just assume that we're on that interval. And the interval is right so that we have a one-to-one -one function for our inverse, so you could draw a sine graph and just take a chunk that's one-to-one, -one, passes the horizontal line test. So now I'm going to come up here in my triangle, and I'm going to label the sides so that the sine of theta is the same thing as x, and if you're prone to fractions, you can do that. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And then I'll use Pythagorean theorem to get my third side length. So that will be 1 minus x squared under a radical. And now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to try to focus that just a little bit better. Oh, better. Almost there. How about that? There we go. Okay, so I have my three sides labeled. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write this sine of theta equals x. And this is what I'm going to come in and differentiate. So right, theta depends on x, and I have the sine of theta equals x. So I'm going to differentiate each side with respect to x. So what happens here on the left side? I have the derivative of the sine of theta, which depends on x. So that means I need to use some chain rule. So first I do the derivative of the outside function. It'll give me the cosine of theta times, then I have the derivative of theta, or I'm sorry, the derivative of, yes, theta with respect to x. And on the right side, I have dx dx. Well, that's 1. So d theta dx, well, remember, theta is the same thing as the inverse sine of x. So this is actually what I wanted. This amount right here, this is the derivative of the inverse sine right there. So that's what I want to solve for. So d theta dx, which is the same thing as d dx of the inverse sine of x is equal to, so I have 1 over the cosine of theta. We're almost there. So now I'm going to go up here to my triangle, and I'm going to write, figure out what ratio leads to 1 over cosine. So let's see. I have to go backwards. So I'll do cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So now we can say that the derivative with respect to x of the inverse sine of x equals, ready, 1 over radical 1 minus x squared. Now you can do this with all of the trig functions following that same pattern. So if I write just one more down quickly, if we were to do the derivative with respect to x of the inverse tangent of x. I would draw another triangle. I would say, okay, so the inverse tangent, that's just another name for an angle, so I'll give it an angle name. I'll take the tangent of both sides so that I can get 
my x out from that inverse tangent function. Only true for a given interval, but we could work on that later. So here's my theta. So now I need to label my sides so that the tangent of the angle I've drawn is x over 1. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Pythagorean theorem gets me the missing side. Take the derivative here. So I have the derivative of the tangent of theta, remembering that theta is a function of x, so tangent is secant squared theta times d theta dx. There's the part I need. dx dx is 1. Solve for d theta dx, because that's the derivative of my inverse tangent. So 1 over secant squared theta also known as cosine squared theta. And cosine squared of theta, if I come back up here to my triangle, cosine is 1, or I'm sorry, adjacent over hypotenuse, and I'm squaring them, so 1 squared over the radical squared. And that is the derivative of theta, which is the inverse tangent. So the derivative of inverse tangent is 1 over x squared plus 1. So there are the derivative of two inverse trig functions. Inverse tangent, 1 over x squared plus 1, and the derivative of inverse sine, 1 over radical 1 minus x squared. And remember the other thing, sometimes this will be written as arc tan x or arc sine x. So if you see that notation, it means the same thing as inverse.